anticipation has been building all year in Cincinnati as the city braces for the battle of annual bragging rights. Xavier and Cincinnati, it's special in college basketball. It's also the biggest game of the season for Luke fans in this town. Super Tuesday inside the Centos Center as we bring you Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco Systems. Number 10, Cincinnati, making the four-mile trek across town to Xavier. And after last year's Musketeer upset, Xavier has taken five of the last seven meetings in this series that is getting under the skin of the Bearcats. This is meeting number 71. Great to have you with us for the Crosstown Shootout. Dave O'Brien and Len Elmore. Cold outside, but it's about to get hot indoors. And Len, this one has the feel of a gritty inner city rivalry. They're kind of dying out around the country. This one's big time. Well, certainly we know Cincinnati, 15 and two, ranked 10th in the nation, national reputation, national attention, constantly in the public eye. But across town, you got Xavier, a tournament team last year, but this year unranked 10 and nine, and it's the Rodney Dangerfield factor in effect here. Xavier's looking for some respect. And as you mentioned, throw the records out the window when they get between these lines, they're going to get ready to rumble. Yeah, more often than not, the team that is ranked coming in, and tonight that's Cincinnati, they're the team that falls in this series, at least over the last six or seven meetings. Now, we talk about star watching, who to highlight tonight. Neither side really has a go-to guy, a marquee star like a David West or Danny Fortson, but these two have the ability to light it up and have big nights. Well, certainly with Tony Bob, a six-man extraordinaire, he forces opponents to adjust when he enters a game. And Romain Sato, multi-skilled backcourt player at 6'5", leads his team in scoring and in rebounding. Well, yesterday in the Cincinnati newspapers, Bob Huggins, the coach of Cincinnati, he criticized the Xavier students for the vulgar chance during the game here two years ago. Xavier apologized at that time for the behavior. Huggins drew some hot denials, though, from the Xavier administration after maintaining that some of those chants began during the national anthem. I'll say tonight during the national anthem, everyone was on their best behavior. Well, the president of Xavier came out, kind of diffused the situation, but fans misbehaviors happening all across the country. Let's just hope that these guys are able to play and the fans enjoy it. Well, expected to be a top-notch college basketball game. Great emotion in the Cintas Center as we get underway. Maxwell's first shot tipped up no good. And the first two misses for Cincinnati crashing the glass. Romain Sato, an All-American candidate out of the Central African Republic, the young man who speaks six different languages and didn't speak a word of English when he arrived in the state six years ago. Well, both of these teams love to play man-to-man. -man. Cincinnati obviously known for their pressure. They've got to be able to score, though, to apply the pressure. Xavier's going to really take their time, look for good shots. Justin Dolman, a freshman who's been starting the last 10 games, immediately gets shut down. Field tries a three-pointer. That's off the mark. Cincinnati not waiting to get the ball in the air and get those shots up. Well, that's been a question mark about Cincinnati. Not enough patience in the half court. That's one of their weaknesses. Arnold Chalmers with it. And now Xavier will set up in a half-court offense. Well, absolutely, Xavier wants to be able to play this game. They only average about 69 points a game. They want to play in the 70s. They want to be very particular about what they do offensively, but more importantly, make Cincinnati play half-court deep. Yep, and they want to hit the shots that they do take. Shot clock is down to two. And it expires, and they give up the basketball. So forget about taking a shot and making it. They're only shooting 42%. They didn't even get one off there. Head coach Thad Mata up against Bob Huggins. Bob Huggins sometimes will bring in an entire new lineup if he doesn't like how the starters are performing. The term starter may mean less at Cincinnati than any school in college basketball. Well, absolutely. Yeah, 10 players at 13 minutes approximately or more, and their hallmark is pressure, size, and balance. Stolen away by Xavier Cage, got a hand on it, takes it himself and draws a foul. 18.09 to play here in the first half in Cincinnati at the Centos Center, where Xavier is 25-1 and against non-conference opponents. Well, again, a nice job here. Look at the defense collapse. The ball is struck loose, and then, as we saw in practice today, Xavier wants to attack every opportunity they get in an open floor situation or against the pressure. Justin Cage at the line. He gets into the lineup tonight. We look at the Xavier starting lineup with that motto. Cage, one of the freshmen in there, along with Justin Dolman. Cage, the 2003 Indiana High School Mr. Basketball, playing about 19 minutes per game, but he gets his first college start this evening. 
Well, he's in certainly to give Xavier a bigger look. On offense, he's more of an old-fashioned post-up player, but on defense, he can play the backcourt. On the back door, stuffed in by Kareem Johnson, the 6'7 senior out of Alabama. That ties it to two, and with authority by Johnson, the senior playing perhaps his best basketball ever at Cincinnati. He's in a great stretch of games. Chalmers giving off. Back shot, no good by Anthony Miles. They need him to really perform in the paint tonight. It's been a weakness of Xavier's, any real presence in the lane. That's one of the big reasons they've slipped to 10 and 9. Disappointing season for them, but this is the kind of game that could turn things around for them completely. James White, the transfer out of Florida, looking for room. Max Seal gives it back to him. Xavier coming away with the rebound. That time, a little bit more patience by Cincinnati, moving the ball, got a good shot. Chalmers, quick drive, lays it up, did not get it. Johnson rebounds for Cincinnati. The Bearcats in black, clawing away, White in the paint, lays it in. He's got great hops. Well, James White, very athletic, a transfer from Florida. The guy from Kensington, Maryland, really demonstrating again what made him a terrific high school player, player of the year in the state of Maryland. Didn't get an opportunity, at least in his mind, in Florida, but here in Cincinnati, he's getting all he wants. I knew you'd have that young man from Maryland high on your list tonight. I he can play. He I know, he certainly can. He can jump right through the ceiling. Sato gives off. Miles from long range for him, but he knocks it down anyway. The 6'9 senior. And this one tied at four. Remember how hot the Bearcats started this year. They won their first 13 games of the year, but they've lost two of their last four, including a 27-point blowout loss at the hands of Louisville. I'll tell you what, the patience, you take a look right here on the screen and roll after the two guys step up to try to trap right there and there's the roll and that's patience you got to be able to recognize hold on to the ball make sure things happen that's good execution by cincinnati chalmers double team deep on the wing sato double team 15 50 to play here in half number one tied out four point xavier calling a timeout to prevent the turnover there sato nearly gave it up it's a short timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Xavier coming in with a 10 and 9 record. The Musketeers lend have fallen kind of hard since David West went off to the NBA. A team with three senior starters. They were expected to win the A-10 West Division. This has been an extremely disappointing year for them. Well, last year they were terrific. 26 and 6, 15 and 1 in the A-10, won the West Division. And only David West is gone from their core, if you will, that starting five. And that's why it's so disappointing at 10 and 9. The core remained. They were going to build with some young players, but unfortunately, they have not been able to get, you know, the type of consistency that they wanted to. The starting five from last year, the team, as Len pointed out, they won 26 games, and the only change is David West. They go with the freshman and Justin Dolman, the 6'9 kid from Union, Kentucky. Otherwise, the entire lineup is identical. Well, certainly their last three losses kind of highlights the weaknesses. 33% from the field, only 24% from three-point range they're having problems offensively and again it's been a lack of consistency Sato has been a guy who's been able to carry him but he hasn't had a whole lot of help off the fake Sato got himself free for three on cue Romain Sato the 6'5 senior the number one scorer and top rebounder for Xavier as he goes tonight that's how they may go in their upset bit of Cincinnati White with it high is good shooting range. Bill Williams with it. He's one of the best three-point shooters they've ever had. How about Max Seal slithering in and slamming it down? Well, I'll tell you what, Jason Max Seal, shot blocker, intimidator. But you talk about some athleticism. Once again, you got to put a body on him. He's a candidate for the John Wooden Player of the Year Award, averaging 14 and a half a game. Xavier leading by one. Miles almost lost it, collects it on the baseline. Gonna watch the five seconds. Nearly gave it up, did not. Finn out high. Shot clock is at six. Miles with a turnaround. Not a good shot for him. Cincinnati 
noted for tremendous defensive play. They're holding opponents to 38% shooting, ninth nationally in field goal defense, and they're forcing 21 turnovers per game. We'll see tonight if it breaks down like this. Xavier shooting from long range. Romain Sato up a great fake, knocking down a long triple. But on the other end, the athleticism of Cincinnati and the way they attack the rack, Jason Maxiel, the senior from Carrollton, Texas, slamming in two. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of Rivalry Week is presented by Cisco Systems. This is the power of the network now and in part by PlayStation 2. This is all they're talking about in Cincinnati. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems. It is a 7-6 lead for Xavier. And the Xavier fans giving Bob Huggins the business because he was uh, kind of ragging on the fans at the top of the week saying that they performed very badly the last time these two teams met on this court a couple of years ago. He didn't like the way they handled themselves. A lot of language, he said. Xavier apologized at the time. Lionel Chalmers, he says that of Cincinnati wants to win. If they want bragging rights this year, they have to come to our place and get it. This is what he's done in his career against Cincinnati. Well, Bob Huggins knows what he's doing. He took a lot of pressure off of his team. I mean, they've got everything to lose, essentially, by losing this game at 15-2, and two, nationally ranked against a team that's teetering on 500 for the year. Wanted to take the pressure off his team, place it on himself. In the paint, Cincinnati with eight points. Xavier has yet to get a bucket in there. Sato with a runner, can't get it to go. Quickly inside, they go to Eric Hicks, the 6'6 sophomore. Hicks, who vowed before the game, we ain't going to lose two in a row. And this is a guy who is known to be on the little cocky side, I guess, Tony Bobbitt. Well, Tony Bobbitt definitely brings energy off the bench. A lot of it with his play, some of it with his mouth. But the fact is, you see what he adds when he comes on the floor. And I mentioned, because of his athleticism, his ability to slash as well as shoot the three, the other team has to adjust. They've got to find somebody who can stay with them. And that's not always an easy solution. Hicks getting about 18 minutes a game and close to seven points. He's the number two rebounder on this team. Had a nice game against Marquette. Marquette then rang number 21. Cincinnati won that game. He had 15 points and 10 rebounds. So he goes hard to the glass as well. He makes one of two. 13-48 to play here in the first half. And Max Seal hit with the foul. And Xavier takes over the basketball. Cincinnati, not, a play, not afraid to play physical with you. We talk about their size. It's not so much their height. It's their girth. You got a lot of guys out here that look like they bench about 300. Broad, cut, and willing to use it. Well, that's certainly the case with Jason Maxiel. Kind of a skinny kid when he came in. He benches 320 now with 6% body fat. Yow. Cut like a, a young Len Elmore, for crying out loud. 9-7 <laughs> Cincinnati. You could cut that out of a magazine, man. <laughs> Sato off the screen will back it out. Well, man, Sato, such a wonderful story. Hasn't been home to see his mother and father in the Central African Republic for about four years. It's turned over. Sato with a complaint for the officiating crew. By the way, a top-notch officiating crew. Absolutely. You talk about Jim Burr, Bob Donato, Frank Scagliata. E either one of those guys, if they're with another couple of officials, they would be the lead official. So, you know, this is an important game. He had three lead officials in one gym. Sato is fouled as he came up with the steal. Kirkland with the personal. Cincinnati leading by two, low scoring early. Huggins knows the feeling of that, probably doesn't like it. Last year, Xavier won a very low scoring matchup in this rivalry, 50 to 45. And that one has stuck for 12 months. Well, Xavier's a much more deliberate team, but the reason the score is low is primarily because of excellent defense. A lot of denial out there, contesting every shot, sending some back. Yep, Chalmers just had his rejected, and Bobbitt comes away with it. Williams from the corner drops in a triple. Nick Williams, the 6'4 junior from Arlington, Texas, 
junior college transfer, he can score. Well, absolutely. You got a bunch of guys on Cincinnati's team capable of beating you from beyond the arc, and it just makes them extraordinarily formidable. You got that inside-out combination. Chalmers gets himself open for a three-pointer. Not there. Hicks tears away the rebound for the Bearcats. They've opened up a five-point lead at the Sintas Center. Brooklyn was slamming into the lane, and he commits the foul. That's a charge on Armin Kirkland. Well, you take a look again, a terrific defense by Cincinnati. You know, they'll send it back, and then on the other end, they'll capitalize, keep the floor spread. And between Nate Williams and Field Williams and Tony Bobbitt, you got three guys who really fill it up from beyond the arc. Kirkland picking up his second foul, though. He hits the bench. Nice job by Bobby right there, stepping out and helping. Another block. Wow. Hicks going up to deny Sato. We thought he had an easy dunk. He had it rejected. The fans they wanted a foul. This time they do, but that goes against Xavier, not what this crowd has in mind. Yeah, but it's kind of the man-to-man -man combat that we expected. And you talk about bragging rights. These little battles within a game are the kinds of things these players live for. Sato thought he could take Hicks and try to flush on him, and Hicks said, no, I'm not having it. So Sato picks himself up. As Johnson goes to the line, Kareem Johnson, the senior, they think right now he's playing the best basketball of his career at Cincinnati. He had a career-high 15 points in the loss to Charlotte on Saturday. Six out of eight from the field. He had 12 rebounds in the game before that against East Carolina. He could have a major impact on this one. What he does at the line is doubles up Xavier. 14 to 7 in this backyard battle. We'll take a look at some of the other great rivalries all week long in college basketball when we come back. Cincinnati up seven. You know, the famous skyline chili here in Cincinnati, they can't do without it. These two schools are so close together, just four miles apart. You can grab your dog with a chili on it. You can draw across town, and that's exactly what we're going to do. You get in the car, you head from Xavier to Cincinnati, or in this case, Cincinnati to Xavier and the Cintas Center, and it'll be just about enough time to down a couple of those chili dogs. Those chili dogs called conies, but I don't know. Being from New York... You know, I have to question the call. Blasphemy, huh? Yeah. 3.4 miles. Some of the other rivalries that are so close. How about LaSalle Temple? They're in Philly. Duke to North Carolina, just 11.4. Southern Cal to UCLA, also making the list. But this is one of the premier in-city rivalries you'll find in college sports. It's a great atmosphere. And they've been talking about it, well, since last year's game, which Xavier won by five. Now, Cincinnati's a big city, but it's got that small-town atmosphere. And that's what makes this thing so big, because everybody seems to know everyone else. Bobbitt on court's a long-distance shot. Tony Bobbitt, one of the top six men in America, averaging 14 a game coming off the bench. Well, again, we mentioned you got to have an answer for Tony Bobbitt. And just like the old Celtics, when John Havlicek was a sixth man, you bring a guy that's better onto the floor, a sixth man, force the other team to adjust to him. Bobbitt committing the foul, although he thought he got all basketball, and now Huggins will do some hugging. Bobbitt last year wasn't with the Bearcats in their first game against Louisville. He actually quit the team three days earlier out of frustration over playing time. That's a mistake he says he regrets. He apologized for it. It's a game they lost by six points. Well, he's also been a big game player. Last year, he averaged about eight points on the season, but against top 25 teams, he averaged 14 points a game. So this is a guy that comes with an awful lot of energy, awful lot of emotion. Well, he really feels he has to be the leader for the Cincinnati team, even though he is not in the starting lineup. Edric Finn at the line. Sato with the rebound. Kicks it out for Goldman. He likes that three-pointer. Two strong that time. Miles tipped it up. It rolled off the rim. Excellent job by Miles to try to keep that alive. He's battling three and four black shirts in there. And Cincinnati had gone on a 13 to nothing run. So they built up a 17-8 lead and with the basketball. 
But Xavier wants to continue in that man-to-man, -man, forcing Cincinnati to slow down a little bit as they pack it inside and created the turnover with a little indecision. James White turns it over with the travel. Get out of Florida, where he played about 20 minutes a game as a freshman before transferring to play for Huggins here in Cincinnati. Had a bit of a personality conflict with Billy Donovan. Actually suspended him three times there. So 14 possessions for Xavier. Just eight points and a two for 12 shooting. But one of the problems with Xavier's offense is that Miles, even though he's battling on the boards, not really the inside threat that you need to complement perimeter players like Sato and like Chalmers. Hence, really, Xavier's just passing the ball around the perimeter, looking for jump shots, and it's one and out for them. And it's been over five and a half minutes since Xavier last hit a field goal, 0 for 8. Field looking inside. Johnson, nice looking shot over Miles. For Korean Johnson, you mentioned it, last two games averaging a double-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds. He's got the groove now. 19 to 8. And it begins to get a little tense inside the Cintas Center. Most of the Xavier fans sitting on their hands right now. They have no choice. Their team is not scoring. And the Seattle ball, it finally went inside to Miles, but the ball really had gone around the perimeter most of the time. That's what you need. You need to establish a little bit of an inside game so you can kick it back outside for the shooters to square up. And Miles needs to play big. That's the first points in the paint all night here in the first half for Xavier. Sato got a hand on it, but actually it was Bobbitt who touched it last. So Xavier has it on the turnover. Bob Huggins, not one of those guys who's getting all dressed up for this, unlike <laughs> Thad Mata in his third year at Xavier. He's one and one against the Bearcats in this big rivalry. I think Huggins is like that with his kids, too. He lets them be kids. He does not require them to travel in jackets and ties. He lets them be themselves. They can make road trips in sweats, but he is all business come game time. Dolman again. Sweet-looking jump shot, a two-pointer. Yeah, Dolman with his size. A 6'9", high-arcing jump shot. And watched him in practice today again, attacking the pressure, shooting beyond the arc, and he was dropping him with regularity. Bob it off the back iron. It comes to Diedrich Finn. A seven-point lead for the Bearcats. Sato really fighting with Field. That's a great battle. Miles starting to feel it. Not this time. But Miles has got to stay down on the block. He can get that shot anytime. That's what Cincinnati wants. Bobbitt did not wait, and he cashes in on another three. See, when Miles takes the shot 10, 12 feet away from the basket or off the lane, there's nobody there really to contest on the rebound. And Cincinnati grabs it, goes into transition, and they've got a lot of options. Anthony Miles, a big 6'9 senior, but sometimes reluctant to use that size. He got tripped on that play. He was about to go up and stuff down two. It's the deck instead, 8.05 to go in the half. And later tonight on ESPN, Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems continues, 9 Eastern. Number 9, Kentucky battles Florida, all part of Rivalry Week. And for more information, log on to ESPN.com. By the way, nine of the top 10, 17 of the top 21 teams in America are on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC this week. I'll tell you what, you look at the Southeast Conference and, you know, Kentucky licking their wounds after getting beat by a very good Vanderbilt team. You know, the surprises of that conference, Mississippi State to an extent, but certainly South Carolina has really built that conference as a power this year. A lot of people didn't think that they would be nearly as strong. Well, it's hard to go in there and beat Dave Odom's team, especially there in South Carolina. They play some defense. Yeah, Dave's got, he's got to touch again. Coming up on the eight-minute mark of half number one, Xavier looking to make a run, but Cincinnati with it. And this terrific intercity rivalry in Cincinnati, Ohio. Great to have you with us. Right now, you got Xavier playing a triangle and two. Two guys on the shooters and the big guys setting up in a triangle inside. Really didn't deter the shooters for Cincinnati. All you got to do is step out, get a good look, and drop it. Nick Williams certainly did a long distance three to bump that lead back to 11. Sato back to a great cut and a basket by Finn. But Sato with an incredible pass over the top of the defense. The save out to Johnson.
you to step out the heads right there by Caudill. A nice job to slow the progress of Cincinnati down. Field Williams giving it up to Bobbitt. He's got the hot hand right now, forcing that shot. Chalmers was right in his grill defensively. That's the knock on Cincinnati. Make them play half court and they'll lose patience. Hicks sends that one out of bounds on the rejection. It's hard going inside. If you try to get it into the paint against Cincinnati, it may wind up in the fourth row. Rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems inside the Centos Center in Cincinnati. Cincinnati leading Xavier 25-16 and Len Elmore. Do the Musketeers have to try something else? Well, they certainly do. They're trying to throw Cincinnati off balance. And here's the triangle right there. These three big men are playing a zone. The other two guys are chasers. And this is trying to invite Cincinnati in. But the best way to solve that, look at the range on the jump shot. Nobody can contest Nate Williams. And when you have that kind of range, you can play any kind of defense you want. Williams able to knock it in from three-point land. Field Williams, who just goes by field on the back of his uniform, one of two starting Williams men for Cincinnati. He also has tremendous three-point range, among the best in the country. So they're just very dangerous out there. And you can bet that Xavier has a couple of more of those so-called junk defenses under their sleeve. they got to find a way to throw Cincinnati off balance. Sato bumping. Can't get it, but he'll go to the line. Romain Sato to shoot. Young man who has his own website with a greeting in each of the half dozen languages he speaks. Has his own nesting doll encapsulating his talents as a student and a player. He owns the Xavier three-point record. He'll be a college graduate in May with a degree in French. Terrific young guy. Absolutely, and I like the URL, star in any language. Yes. That's right, he can greet you in one of six different languages. French, his favorite, did not speak a word of English when he came to the States from Africa. 25-18, Cincinnati. Johnson with it out high, gives off to Field Williams. Xavier now in a bit of a man-to-man, -man, and that time again, changing defenses forced the confusion. Sato with the follow on the cage, miss. And here come the Musketeers, they're down five. Williams again. Nick Williams left unguarded. They can't keep doing that. Like my grandma said sometimes, hush, baby. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what Williams said with that jumper. The crowd just starting to get into it. Yeah, they were. Everyone was starting to buzz. The kid knocks it down. Justin Dolan, the freshman, answering. He says to the Cincinnati fans, hush your mouth. Bob it. Not this time. For him, Johnson with a tough rebound in the paint. Right back up. Connell brings down the rebound. Chalmers really pushing it, weaving his way through. Goldman again didn't take the three. Slap back by Hicks. That's his third block in the first half. Well, that was tremendous recovery because Dolman, nice head fake, got to the basket, probably should have exploded. Chalmers does. That trade to Xavier to an in two. Well, this is what this rivalry is all about here in Cincinnati. Trading haymakers. Doma nearly a theft. Well, we told you, throw the records out the window when these two teams meet between the lines. So many things happen. So many guys rise to the occasion. Johnson working hard for a basket. Gets his own miss. That was rather lucky. Bobbitt wanted another tray. Williams, too strong, and it's over the top of the backboard. I tell you what, Cincinnati, too much reliance on the perimeter game. Xavier had to do it because they don't have the inside presence, and Dolman able to bury it. But Cincinnati's got some big guys that you can take inside. They've got to be able to use it. Again, another opportunity for Xavier from beyond the arc. That's what they have to do. That's their strength right now with little or no inside game. But Cincinnati has some dominant guys that you can go to inside. As we mentioned before, they don't have enough confidence in any one player to be a go-to guy. Hence, they're just firing up from anywhere. Finn banks it in, and he ties it. 28-28. 
Xavier on a 15-3 run. Cincinnati right now with the team on the floor playing a little bit of five out. Looking for cutters, no post up. One shot, Sato down with a rebound. One pass and a shot. Again, the impatience of Cincinnati in the half court is hurting them terrifically. Two times during the recent years of this rivalry, Xavier has faced Cincinnati when Cincinnati was the number one team in the country and pulled off this city rivalry with a big upset. Huggins team comes in as the number 10 team in America after losing to Charlotte on Saturday, 86-83. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, two of the NBA's most popular players collide as Shaquille O'Neal and the Los Angeles Lakers meet LeBron James and the Cavaliers. NBA Wednesday on ESPN coverage begins with the NBA shoot-around at 7 Eastern. Shaq has served his brief suspension. Long enough to consult a thesaurus. <laughs> Yes, I think Shaq, especially when it's a live microphone in his face, has to choose those words a little more carefully. As he found out. It's all about the right adjectives. Others will work in that instance, even if you're ripping into the officials. Sato has just given Xavier a 29-28 to 28 lead. Now trying to make it a two-point advantage. That's the Central African flag, and that, of course, is the homeland of Romain Sato. They love him here. Scoop shot ties it as Moore went racing in and took the foul. They'll go to the line. All right, Chad Moore, he's one of those guys that comes off the bench, normally a role player out there to try to distribute the ball, but here he takes matters in his own hands, finds a lane, and as I said, explodes to the basket. You know, you get head and shoulders past the guy, you got to take it all away, and that's an excellent job by Moore. Fearless. He cannot get the one, but his basket ties it. The pace has been terrific the last seven or eight minutes after kind of a balky start by both sides. Cage swings it to Sato. Chalmers wants to shoot it. A three again for Lionel Chalmers. Trying to make up for a bad game against Cincinnati last year. He's the man who said, we have bragging rights. They have to come in here and beat us. And Xavier has the lead by three. Field on the baseline, fading away, lost his footing. He stumbled. Xavier is really heated up after going two for 12 at the outset. Well, they've been able to adjust to the defense, to the pressure of Cincinnati, moving without the ball, bringing in cutters, screening away to get shooters open. And then there's the confidence factor. You drop one or two, start feeling good about yourself. Gage jumping, got hit. 2.41 to go in the half, and Cincinnati has made five of their last six shots. So everyone's heated up for the Musketeers. Well, so much more aggressive is Xavier right now, more so now than they were in the first couple of minutes of this game. They kind of were back on their heels a little bit as Cincinnati really came at them, but they obviously regained them, their momentum, regained their courage, if you will, because they're taking the ball to the basket, not just settling for jump shots. Kirkland will step out with his third personal foul. Kareem Johnson, the senior, comes in for him. 35 to 30. Xavier coming all the way back in his rivalry with Cincinnati. Diedrich Finn with a spectacular drive. And right now it is all Musketeers. Hey, for Epson in the studio, wanted to give you the latest on the Bob Knight situation at Texas Tech. Knight is going to coach the Red Raiders tonight in their game against Baylor. He has been reprimanded, not suspended, for an incident that occurred yesterday in a Lubbock supermarket. He had an argument with the Chancellor, David Smith. The argument happened out in public. There was some talk that there would be a five-day suspension, but after meetings today, Knight issued an apology, saying he regrets the way the situation turned out, and he will not be suspended. Jay Billis, Steve Lavin, join me to talk about this more at the half. Guys? Well, you know, there's 
the Bob Knight situation, and there are all the great rivalries in college basketball during rivalry week. But here in Cincinnati, this is the only basketball story that matters on the face of the earth. Well, I'll tell you, you got a lot of folks right here who want to come and express themselves. You know, there are many more signs where that came from, and you can tell where the allegiances lie. Either blue or red and no in between. Xavier looking for the upset of number 10 Cincinnati. I mean, they're starting to talk around town about Cincinnati's early soft schedule, Len, and how much it may have hurt them. Obviously, you go to Louisville and you lose. That's no disgrace. But Huggins said, losing by 27, that was disgraceful. He said, I've never been beaten like that in my entire career. And that was a close game around the halftime. It was just an absolute dismantling by Louisville. A lot of it had to do with fouls, put Louisville on the line. Well, the emotion sky high for this one. Field hits the deck with Sato. It squibs out of bounds. And Xavier has the ball. And that's the way it's going for the Musketeers and for Thad Mata, their third-year head coach right now. And you talk about halftime and how important that is, how close Cincinnati's game with Louisville was, 62-21 and 21 in three seasons at Xavier. But at halftime, when his team has the lead, Xavier is 55 and 6. So they want to get to intermission ahead against Cincinnati tonight. And going back to that Louisville game, you talk about being aggressive. You know, Xavier's taking a page out of Louisville's book. Louisville got to the line 42 times in that particular game, and that made all the difference in the world in that blowout. A ton of free throws. Spin with a save. Knocked it right off of the leg of Nick Williams as he caught it and bounced it off of Williams and out of bounds. Well, you talk about a 180-degree turn in momentum, 180-degree turn in character. Right now, it's Cincinnati that's back on their heels, not being very aggressive, playing tentatively, as Xavier did in the first few minutes of this game. And Cincinnati thrives on forcing the other guy to turn the ball over forcing 21 turnovers a game. Xavier has only turned it over twice here in the first half. That's amazing. And Cincinnati really hasn't applied that full court pressure. Bob Hawkins probably figuring it. That's what Xavier worked on during the whole practice period, trying to change gears on him a little bit. Sato jump shot from the corner. That was with the shot clock down to three, so they waited a long time to hit that one. You know, for Cincinnati right now, with a minute and 17, it's just enough to try to execute for the next few possessions like that. Take advantage of what the defense gives you. Don't try to blow a lead out and wind up rushing and doing things that you're not accustomed to doing. And defensively, you've got to play solid man-to-man -man defense because Xavier is very confident right now. Good job there by Chad Moore. Now Xavier on an extended run, but it's Cincinnati trying to run now. Williams can't save it. One of the officials took a tumble right over the cameraman. I hope Jim Burr is okay. He was trying to make a call, and we see that he is okay. This is what I'm talking about. This is trying to make too many things happen instead of taking that last possession. Jim Burr trying to make the call. That's a good way to keep the official from blowing that whistle. <laughs> yeah, just knock him over. Run right into him. Jim hung in there. Three-point game. Pressure now by the Bearcats. Yeah, that was a wasted possession. Chad Moore trying to make too many things happen. Again, we talk about patience, and you got to exercise it, and you have to exercise it consistently if you're Cincinnati. Ben with it. They're going to have to shoot 16 on the shot clock. Ben driving in off to Chalmers. See, they're just attacking right now. Every opportunity they get, testing the Cincinnati defense, putting the ball on the floor, going to the basket. Shot clock at three. Finn missed everything. Shot clock violation did not touch the rim. 17.7 to shoot for Cincinnati. And coming up on the budget, Redicar halftime report. More on the Bobby Knight situation there at Texas Tech. Jay Billis, Steve Lavin come your way, and LeBron left out as far as NBA All-Stars. How about that? Well, I think some a couple of All-Star coaches are trying to make a statement here regarding the young players. I think it might be right, Carmelo Anthony subtle. didn't get in either. Exactly. Yeah. None, none too subtle. Mm -hmm. And another point to be made, and you know, regardless of who's wrong, who's right, regardless of whose participation in the, the night saga, one thing I don't think you want to do, and that's you don't want to try to embarrass your boss in public. You know, the spotlight is on him, and it really boggles my mind that 
you know, he would not be able to control whatever feelings that he might have. And again, Bobby Knight would not ask anything less of his own players. Right. And, and again, I'm not assigning blame to anybody, but the fact is, you got to know better. Don't right. embarrass your boss in public, even if your boss is embarrassing himself. 17.7 seconds left in the first half. Xavier has to defend here on Cincinnati. The Bearcats look to get up a final shot, a chance to tie it at the break. Williams tied up deep in the backcourt. Field Williams, great pass and a block by Soho. And time to get off the shot for the Musketeers. Chalmers, two seconds to shoot it. Pulls up. A turnaround by Xavier. They were on the verge of being blown out in the first 10 minutes by Cincinnati. An amazing reversal of fortune here. And you want to talk about a contrast. We saw Cincinnati not exercising patience. Here with six seconds left, presence of mind to get set, get in the position, understand time and score situation, and make it happen on the penetration. Here's another look right there. After Sato holds up, makes sure the floor is balanced, gets it to Chalmers, and Chalmers makes it happen. Excellent patience. That's why Xavier is where they are right now, playing to their strengths. Where they are is in the lead, 37 to 32 in the Crosstown shootout. Now let's join Dave Rebson for the budget rental car halftime report. Dave, take it away. Okay, Dave, thanks a lot. Great atmosphere there in Cincinnati. Xavier looking to make it 6 of 8 over the Bearcats. And as Dave said, take some serious momentum into the locker room. All right, the latest on the Bob Knight situation, in case you're just joining us, Knight is going to coach tonight against Baylor for Texas Tech. There had been some talk of a suspension. He will not be suspended. PN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball. Brought to you by Microsoft Office Live Meeting. Meet and collaborate live online. And GMC. We are professional grade. Second half coming up. Xavier looking for an upset leading Cincinnati 37-32. It's a rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. Len Elmore, Dave O'Brien with you here at the Cintas Center. It was an 11-point lead at about 7 minutes and 40 seconds into the first half, and all of a sudden, everything collapsed for Cincinnati. Xavier turned it on a great run. Now they have command of the game. They certainly have. This is a pendulum swing, if you will. Again, Cincinnati started off with some dominance, particularly inside the paint. On defense, you had six blocks all together, five by Eric Hicks really tried to intimidate Xavier but Xavier wasn't having any of it and terrifically they were able to flip that switch and get very aggressive as we mentioned Cincinnati again the inside dominance a lot of plays going inside early and getting points in the paint and for some reason Cincinnati went away from that inside play and that gave the opening to Xavier very aggressive going to the basket they were not going to be intimidated despite the six blocks and you can tell one of the factors that you use to measure aggressiveness is getting to the free throw line and you take a look 11 free throws made for 12 attempts Cincinnati only five attempts so they weren't aggressive at all you know the other thing that jumps out land of first half stats presented by GMC trucks is three turnovers for Xavier Cincinnati thrives on turnovers forcing 21 per game well they certainly do and Cincinnati thrives on those as you mentioned open floor opportunities but baskets in transition and that's the best way to neutralize that hunger for those turnovers is not to turn it over to take care of the ball and Xavier did just that Nick Williams leading all scores with 11 points for Cincinnati in the first half and he hit three three-pointers a much more balanced attack for Xavier a major reason they're in the lead Dolman right to the glass Justin Dolman a freshman and one coming up 39 32 Xavier right back at it where they left off in the first 20 minutes well Justin Dolman a 41 percent shooter from beyond the arc he gets a lot of attention a lot of respect you see the defender rush out on him and Dolman with a nice head fake goes strong to the basket and as you mentioned Dave going aggressively and that's what they finished doing in the first half they're getting it started again and it really is a question of whether or not Cincinnati is going to start to understand that and start to stay on their feet and force Xavier to start moving the ball rather than taking it straight to the hole. 
That's a happy birthday three-point play, by the way, for Justin Dolman, who turned 19 today. <laughs> well, we wouldn't do it if oh, we Oh, so long ago, and yet so far, Max Seal backing in. Good fake to get Sato in the air, but he did not take advantage of it. It's kicked out of bounds, and Cincinnati will retain possession. But it's a good sign, though. Bob Huggins has to be pleased that his guys are starting to explore inside again. That's what got them the early lead, and suddenly they just went away from it. Fell in love with the three-pointer. Trying to force it inside to Max Seal again, and a reach-in foul to go against Xavier. Max Seal may not be having the All-America type of year some anticipated. But would you agree he is a bona fide NBA prospect? Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to wonder what position he's going to play at 6'7", likes to post up, obviously a little too small on the next level. He's got to demonstrate he can face up, shoot that short jump shot. But obviously, 6'7", is still on measure a guy's heart. Field Williams knocking back a three-pointer. The 6'4", senior out of Houston, Texas. He's one of three Bearcats starters from Texas. Bob Huggins loves those Lone Star State kids. He has five Texas in his 13-man roster. There's the full-court pressure. Bob Huggins wants to quicken this game, try to make it a 94-foot game instead of a half-court game. And going back to Max Seal, again, you talk about measuring his heart. He's still a shot blocker, an intimidator, a guy who has some impact on the game. It's just going to be a question of whether or not he can demonstrate some perimeter skills. That plays bigger than 6-7 at times with a nice wide wingspan, a five-point lead here for Xavier. Try to upset Cincinnati again. They've done it from time to time when Cincinnati has been ranked a lot higher than number 10. Twice they beat them when Cincinnati was number one in the country. Well, we said it before. Throw the records out the window. You know, this is a season within the season, and a win by Xavier can make their season. Diedrich Finn bearing a three-pointer. And it's 43 to 35, the biggest lead of the game for the Xavier Musketeers. White walks with it. James White, the transfer from Florida, gives it right back. It's just a nice job right there. Patience by Xavier, moving the ball around, finding the open man, and now so much more relaxed are the Xavier guys when they raise up for those jumpers. That's a great point. They look relaxed. Diedrich Finn certainly does, eight points. Just hit a three-point bucket. Huggins getting himself into the face of the official. 43-35 Xavier. Huggins, by the way, was teed up in Saturday's game against Charlotte. Finn found himself wide open in the lane, but missed a short one. Now, before that game, the loss to Charlotte on Saturday... Huggins could not sleep the night before. He felt lousy about his team's practice sessions, and he sensed that they were going to have a bad performance, and they did. I wonder how much he slept last night. Well, I will say this, that he's got to recognize, and his team has to recognize, that you're not going to get it all back at once. You know, they can't play with anxiety. And Bob Huggins pretty relaxed on the sideline, you know, really trying to instill a little bit of confidence in his team. You know, not going off in the usual Huggins manner. Some of that obviously has to do with his health situation. He's got to stay relaxed. Well, both of them free game, both of them fighting it, struggling a little lately, but they look pretty loose before the opening tip. Dad Mata and Bob Huggins, who has 11 straight 20 win seasons behind him, 12 consecutive NCAA tournament bids. Took Cincinnati to the 1992 Final Four. What a remarkable job he's done rebuilding this program. But not enjoying that score. 43-37. His crosstown rival is winning at the moment. Sato's open. In and out on the three. Miles battled for the rebound, but Cincinnati has it. And as I mentioned before, watching Xavier in their workout earlier today, the one thing they were working on was against the pressure to be able to calmly take the double team, find the open man, and when the open guy gets it, don't settle for the jumper. Put it on the floor, penetrate, force the defense to collapse, and then you find an open shooter on the opposite end. And that strategy is working for, to perfection today. And they look really comfortable using that strategy right now here into the second half. Maxiel gives out for Bobbitt. 
He got it. Tony Bobbitt with a three-pointer. And that's what happens when you explore inside. You get a little inside-out action, and the shooters can flow into the shot. A three-point lead for Xavier. Finn double team did not want to give it up. He calls the timeout. So we have a timeout on the floor. 17.03 to play in the second half. A Cincinnati battle coming at you from the Centon Center. NCAA. Dave Revson back in the studios. Bob Knight is coaching tonight for Texas Tech. The coach taking the floor for the game against Baylor. Reprimanded but not suspended for his verbal dispute with the university's chancellor. And as we check out the score, five players have already scored for the Red Raiders. They are up by seven over the Bears. And Indiana, his former team, up seven on Illinois. That one's in the second half. David Lynn. Okay, thank you very much. Xavier with a 43-40 lead over number 10 Cincinnati with 17.03 to play in half number two. Well, when you have an inside threat, you want to be able to use it. You want to be able to occupy the defense. And Cincinnati right here. Now look at the attention that he's getting inside. Shooter just comes right in. And that's the inside-out threat. Get the ball inside, force the defense to adjust, and then find the open shooter. This is a simple game. Well, it certainly was when Bobbitt got an open look and drilled the three-pointer, and he can be deadly out there. Three times this year, he's attempted ten threes in a game, and he's three for four tonight. Sato spinning, spinning, backed it no good. Cage went flying down the lane, and he was fouled after collecting the rebound. The youngster, Justin Cage, 6'6", freshman out of Indianapolis, 2003 Indiana High School, Mr. Basketball, got his first college start tonight, and he's getting involved. Well, we told you, it's 6'6", kind of a smash-mouth player, likes to play around the paint. And pretty athletic, crashing the glass like that. Hicks fouled him. Five points now for Cage. As mentioned, the first ever Indiana Mr. Basketball to play at Xavier. He led Pike High School to an undefeated senior season and a Class 4A state title, so he's used to winning. That's one of the things that Thad Mata really likes about him. Williams steps up wide open. Buries it again. They just can't leave him open out there. He'll hit it all day. Well, that was a miscommunication defensively because you had the big fella, Miles, having to come out and run at him. Bobbin ahead. Lays it in. Well, that's the pressure, the vaunted Cincinnati Bearcat press. And that's how they get those easy opportunities in transition. And Cincinnati has retaken the lead, 45 to 44. They trailed at halftime, down by five. Now with a one-point lead, Chalmers all rejected by Hicks, who has been a man in the middle tonight. Timeout. 15-51 to go, second half. The momentum has been going back and forth all evening in the Centon Center. Pressure defense by Cincinnati. They cash in and they have the lead. Dave Ramson back in the studio. Georgia Tech and Florida State. Knowles have been outstanding at home, and Tim Pickett, a big part of that. Open the foul. Free throw gave him 20 points in this ball game. And as we check it out right now, we see it is a tie ball game at 48. Meanwhile, Indiana continues to lead Illinois behind 10 from A.J. Moye. It's 38-32 in favor of the Hoosiers. Dave? Negative. This one has flipped again. Cincinnati out in front now. 45-44. Rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. Eric Hicks has just gone for the sixth block. Good luck trying to get a layup underneath when he's in the paint. He has been sensational tonight. That ties his career high. Well, the thing that's extraordinary about Hicks is he's 6'7". You know, he's not that big, but he's got terrific timing, helps out well. And again, the defense of Cincinnati is starting to gel as they force their timeout. Well, that's the signature of the Bearcats. Great defense holding opponents to 38% shooting. And again, watch the penetration by Chalmers. And there on the help side is Hicks with his left hand blocking it. And the only thing he could have done better was keep it in bounds. 
Xavier could not get an inbounds in time. They call a timeout. Later tonight at ESPN, rivalry week continues. Nine Eastern, number nine, Kentucky will battle number 21, Florida. All part of rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN and ESPN2. Rick Pitino's assistants. How about the guys who are on his staff his first year at Kentucky? If Billy Donovan and Tubby Smith on that staff, they go head-to-head -to -head tonight. The Rick Pitino Coaching Academy. That's what we're looking at right now. Some terrific coaches under Rick's tutelage. It's going to be a great college basketball game. Cincinnati has it. Hicks giving up to Williams. And that was a smart play by Hicks. He's not the guy to run the break. Bobbitt is the man to drill the three-point shot, though. And Cincinnati leads 48 to 44. Man, this one turned in a hurry. And again, I think a lot of it had to do with the pressure. Cincinnati much more comfortable playing full court pressure. They feel more relaxed. They flow into their transition game. And, uh, you know, they have just regained their composure and playing with confidence. Look at the bounce in their step as they go on the trap. Trapping again on Chalmers. He tosses it out of bounds. Cincinnati swarming the floor. It's been a story of runs for the Bearcats. They opened a game with a 17-7 run. Xavier came back, took the lead, had the lead at halftime. Then as the second half got underway, Huggins team went out to a 16-7 run. Well, I tell you, Tad Mata has to be very careful. This is a critical juncture for his team. Cincinnati playing very aggressively defensively, turning Xavier over, and the Xavier players have that deer in the headlight look. Huggins thought he saw somebody call a timeout for Xavier before that. But it's nothing but a turnover. Cincinnati will take that. They're starting to pile those up, forcing turnovers here in the second half. Kind of makes you wonder why Cincinnati didn't employ the full court pressure in the first half. Williams looking inside the hands of Max Hill, and there's a foul on that play. Miles pushing from behind. And once again, pressure on the defense by going inside, forcing them to adjust. And regarding not using the pressure in the first half, sometimes coaches can outsmart themselves. I mentioned before that Bob Huggins probably figured that Xavier had worked on that press, so he's trying to change up on him. Cincinnati won the jump. Bobbitt misses the long one. But the idea is you got to play to your strengths every opportunity you have. Miles. Off the fake. You have to wonder if he has moves like that. Why doesn't he go to that more often? And maybe it's because his teammates don't go to him often enough. Nice up and under move by Anthony Miles. Averaging nine a game, but he had 19 points, eight rebounds against Alabama. Hicks down the lane. Too strong. Max Seal is tied up and foul. <laughs> Talked about getting ready to rumble. Yes, sir. It's a rumble in the lane for sure. They're all getting involved. Oh, very physical right there. But again, look at Miles with the nice pump fake. Gets his man off his feet, up and under. You know, that's textbook post play right there. And here on the drive, a lot of contact. A couple of good no calls, but right there, you get mangled. you got to make that call. Give the officials credit, though. They're letting these teams play. Miles with foul number two. Max Seal at the line. Max Seal, the number four all-time shot blocker at Cincinnati. He's had an outstanding career. Has 20 of them in his last seven games. Although Eric Hicks is trying to make a statement today. Six tonight for Hicks. Got them both, 50-46. This is the 71st meeting in the city rivalry between Xavier and Cincinnati. Xavier won last year, 50-44 to behind David West's 23 points. Chalmers slipped in the lane, he went down the Dolman's free. Max Seal, an authoritative rebound. Dolman went for the steal, could not collect it. Well, they're really pushing it. Oh, he missed it, Max Seal! Missing the goal. Well, he lost the handle on it, but a nice job either way of pushing it up in transition. Cage, left-handed, goes down hard and off 
offensive foul. That's a charge. Dan Mata is hopping mad. And I'll tell you what, I give Jason Maxill a great deal of credit. Great shot blockers have an understanding of when to block them, when to take the charge. If you're a ball handler and you're driving and you see a great shot blocker, you expect them to go after you. So you're going to summon up everything. You're going to explode to the basket. That time, Maxfield held his ground, baited Finn into him, and wound up taking the charge. Very intelligent play by Jason Maxfield. Mata on the verge of getting a technical foul handed to him. He has been warned by the referees. And I'm sorry, that was Justin Cage who drew the offensive foul, but a, an intelligent play nevertheless by Max Steele in baiting Cage into going to the basket and taking the charge. Cincinnati by four. The Bearcats coming off a humbling loss to Charlotte on Saturday. Sano went out for the steal, and it dribbles right to Made the steal, lost it, got it back. The Mata's a little happier now. Well, even when you're good, sometimes it's better to be lucky. Good bounce for Romain Sato. So that basket draws the Musketeers to within two. Oh, what a terrific atmosphere in the Cinta Center tonight. The whole city of Cincinnati has been wrapped up for this one for 12 months. Great energy pouring out of this building. Nick Williams deadly from three-point range to Maxiel. Tries the baseline to reverse the beauty. And that's what I'm talking about. You mentioned before whether or not he has a chance on the next level. It plays like that. Ability to put it on the floor, create his own. It's going to help Jason Maxfield. Like he says, now. he says he's the hardest worker Cincinnati has. Dolman skipping into the lane, fouled by Bobbitt. Bobbitt thought there was a travel before there was any contact as he pleads his case. Mata is really into it on that bench for Xavier. You don't think this one matters? You don't think that even at 10 and 9 that this one matters? It absolutely does. Dolman makes the first one. Justin Dolman, the freshman from Union, Kentucky. Pretty sweet touch. Not a very physical player, at least not yet, despite his size, but he has nine points tonight. They prefer that outside shot. And he makes him at the line. Max Seal to the bench, at least for the moment. Xavier trying with the sticky man-to-man -man defense to shut down Cincinnati on this possession. A good movement by Cincinnati, guys with and without the ball. Dolman will lead the break to Chalmers. Foul on the play. Chalmers in what looked for all the world to be one of those fouls where no basket would result. A foul just to shut down the fast break. He has a three-point play now. Well, you take a look at the push. It's Dolman with the pass. And that's why you got to make a play on the ball, and you got to make sure that you get your hand on the ball so that the offensive player can't get it above his shoulder. We're not saying an intentional foul, but you got to tackle the ball. So another reversal. Xavier up by one. Six lead changes in five times. Well, what would you expect in this rivalry? Bobbitt. Short jump shot, no good and no foul. Robert Whaley, who's had a troubled first year at Cincinnati. That's a tough one. You just come into the game, your first touch, you try to make something happen. You want to get a little feel for the game before you take the ball to the basket. Chalmers drives in, lays it up. The basket is good. Chalmers with the hoop and another foul against Cincinnati. Well, that time Kareem Johnson tried to take a page out of Jason Maxfield's book, but Chalmers got smart. 
Take a look here. He sees him setting up, lets the ball go, and Johnson doesn't get there in time. The rule is you cannot step in and occupy the spot once the offensive player has left his feet. In and out for Chalmers. But his basket has given Xavier a 55-52 lead. These two schools are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Xavier on a run. Once again, it's Bob to quiet the crowd, and he ties it at 55. Well, you got to call him cool hand. Tony Bob has really stepped up right now, trying to lead his team. Well, he's led them in scoring five of the last eight games. Dolman, the freshman, off target, but Sato Hall's in a rebound. Dolman again. Great fake. Nice look. It pops out. Carter couldn't handle it, but a nice job by Dolman on the penetration. Bobbitt, the man Xavier has to watch. He gives it up on the baseline. The turnover sends the basketball back to the Musketeers. And we have a timeout on the floor. 10.34 left. Indeed, you think this one doesn't matter? You just look into the eyes of Thad Mata. His Musketeers tied with Cincinnati. Bears on top by one in the game. Right now they are up two and Indiana leading Illinois by six over on ESPN. Dave? All the rivalry games seem to be tight. This one, we can't get any tighter. A very tough ticket, even if you're not technically inside the arena. They're crammed into every available spot in the Centon Center, high above the floor, and that's what those folks up there behind the glass see as they look down. We get a look at the Cisco Systems game track. Cincinnati with Eric Hicks doing all the chores down low, six blocks, tying a career high. Well, we've had some radical pendulum swings throughout this game, but right now at 10.34 left, it's stuck right in the middle, 55-55. Look for Cincinnati to continue the pressure because that's what's given them energy, but variations on the pressure so that Xavier can't read them and feel comfortable. On the other hand, though, I expect Xavier to do nothing fancy. It's all about penetration, about taking advantage of that extraordinary Ordinary Cincinnati help and finding the open shooter. Chalmers has really come alive here in the second half. He's leading the charge for the Musketeers. Dolman up top to Sato inside the three-point arc, and he threw it away. He just tossed it out of bounds. And I think it was premature. Sato did what Xavier expected him to do to penetrate what his teammates wanted him to do, but he gave the ball up too soon. He had another step where he could have gotten to the basket. Sato looking a little bit lost, but when he came to the United States as a high school senior from Africa, he almost got lost in America, and he never made it. Didn't have any friends, no command of the English language when he came from Africa. He arrived fine, but he had to make two different connections at three airports. Here he connects with a steal on the drive, and he lays it in. He almost got lost in LaGuardia. He didn't realize he had to go from Kennedy to LaGuardia, then down to Atlanta, and connect over to Dayton. Hey, there are a lot of American citizens that don't know that. <laughs> That's no lie, let alone if he can't speak English. What a terrific senior year he's having. Max Seal can't get it. Hicks is there. It spins in for him. Or Eric Hicks commanding the weak side glass on that one. And here's the pressure again, as we mentioned. A couple of little variations right now. A little bit of token pressure, then you go to chase. Chalmers hitting the deck. 57-57. Both coaches doing a nice job of using their defenses to kind of get people off balance. But the way to solve that, as Romain Sato did, just take the ball to the basket. Be aggressive. Timeout Cincinnati. 9-12 to play here in the second half. And as we celebrate 25 seasons of college basketball on ESPN and ESPN2, it's time to flash back into the ESPN archives. Darnell Williams. Oh, you don't want to go over the top of the fry. Fry. Going to take it all the way, Lee. And they're ready to rush the floor here at Cincinnati oh. Gardens. Cincinnati! It's over! It's been knocked it's off by Xavier! It's up Sun City, baby! It's up Sun City! Oh! Oh! Wow! They weren't kidding. This means a lot here in Cincinnati. 
Well, it means everything here in Cincinnati. The rivalry revisited. Xavier winning with Cincinnati ranked in the top 10 November of 1996. Cincinnati number one. And in 99, when Cincinnati was number one again, the great finish 66 to 64. Cincinnati comes in tonight ranked number 10. I tell you, we talked about it before. Davis suffers from that Rodney Dangerfield factor. Every time they come into this game, Cincinnati's got the national attention, the national reputation, and Xavier's somehow looking for respect. The Dangerfield just went down in the paint in the person of Dolman, and Hicks went right by him for two, so Cincinnati leading 59-57. Less than nine minutes to play. Dolman, boy, he's got a great head fake. Blocked by Hicks, that's his seventh of the night. Boy, seven blocks by Eric Hicks. More on the fast break, he's denied. Maxiel hit the underside of the rim, but there was a foul. That'll go against Cage and Xavier. Oh, it's a take no prisoners attitude right now. Reckless abandon is how you describe how Jason Maxiel going to the glass. First is the block, again, Eric Hicks Coming off the side, I don't even think Dolman saw him until it was too late. And then in transition, you have Jason Maxiel crashing the boards on the miss. And again, we talk about Cincinnati taking advantage of open floor opportunities, whether it's off the steal or off the block. And that's how they essentially vault to leave by taking advantage fully of those opportunities. Miles and Finn check back in for Xavier. Miles to get to the low block. Dolman and Cottle are out. And some good minutes for Justin Dolman, the freshman out of Kentucky. Maxia missed the first, got the second. A three-point lead for the Bearcats. They are 15 and two coming in. They take a little bit of a tumble in the polls from number seven to number 10 this week. Dave, there's a change in the, in the zone press now, in the man-to-man -man press. It began as a man-to-man -man press. Now Cincinnati in a 2-3 zone. And you see how much time Xavier has taken to get into their offense. They've got to be able to recognize the defense being played against them. Shot clock at six, and they're way out there. That's the cat-and-mouse game both of these coaches are playing with the change in D. Slithering in, Chalmers got the roll. With just a couple of seconds to spare, he got it on the rim. Nice job again. Chalmers recognizing shot clock running down. That's what good point guards do. Penetrate and create. Chalmers has 15 points. Hicks denied by Cage. What a reverse play by Hicks with the right hand. Man, he is putting on a show tonight on both ends. It looked like Len, he was completely shut down. Oh, uh, he's got that extraordinary reach. As I mentioned, only 6'7", plays much bigger than that. And that time, he just reached beyond the defender. There's nine points and seven blocks. Cincinnati staying in that zone, trying to match up a little bit. Ben slips off the hands of Miles, I believe. It's going to be off Cincinnati instead. Xavier caught a break there. And a timeout on the court. 6.53 to go. Setting up for a terrific ending between Cincinnati and Xavier. Hicks with a terrific move underneath for two. Meanwhile. Two's exclusive presentation of Rivalry Week is presented by Cisco Systems. This is the power of the network now and in part by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Cincinnati with a 62-59 lead inside seven minutes to play inside the Sinta Center. This is the quarterback of the darlings of this town, the Cincinnati Bengals, John Kitna, the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. They just missed the playoffs in the final week, Len. 
They're talking about, well, maybe a Super Bowl appearance next year. They're going to take it one step at a time, but he's a big reason they showed such an amazing improvement. Well, absolutely. Coming back from almost obscurity and leading this team, give Marvin Lewis all the credit in the world for being able to construct a winning attitude with those Bengals and really energize this community almost as much as this game. That's right. Marvin spends a lot of time in this building during basketball season. So does Bob Huggins on the other side of town, of course, in his 15th year as the Cincinnati Bearcats coach and trying to avoid an upset against his main rival in town. Sato to go to the line. They had five seconds to get it in bounds, and they did. And then Cincinnati committed the foul to put Sato to the line. Cincinnati better in the second half. Off the bench, 19 points. Well, again, that's what Bob Huggins has to hope that his depth will start to wear Xavier down. That's why they continue to apply those variations on pressure. But Xavier doesn't seem to want to budge. Well, it budged to an in one. Williams straight away. It rolls out. Hicks is everywhere. He's the man who came up with a rebound. Bob, it gives it off. Max Seal bodied up with Miles, and he won that battle on the short jumper. Jason Max Seal, the junior. And here's the press right now, and Xavier doesn't know whether it's token pressure or whether they're going to double. And again, very hesitant, bringing it over half court. Cage is tied up. The possession arrow takes it the other way for Cincinnati. A turnover because of the stifling defense. It's 10 turnovers now. Huggins' team is forced. Cincinnati trying to build on a three-point lead, coming up on six minutes to go. You just feel right now the more confident team is the Bearcats because they can always rely on defensive pressure to come up with a big play. Williams too strong. But what they can't do is they can't just rely on the jump shot. Good ball movement, and they wasted it with a four shot selection. Jombers too strong with a three. You know, Bob Huggins signaling from the sideline. He wants the motion from his team. A lot of cutting, a lot of screening away, bringing new people in. Williams tied up by Sato. Possession arrow for Xavier. And that's one of the things about Romain Sato. A lot of people don't understand. Yes, he's a terrific scorer. 16 points a game, leading rebounder on this team. But he's a sticky defensive player, picks his spots. And that time, a good good hands in disrupting that particular play for Cincinnati. Gets his hands on the ball. You see how good Xavier was taking care of the ball in the first half. Just three turnovers, eight in the second half. Well, a lot of it has to do with the fact that Cincinnati didn't really go to the full court pressure in the first half. And they applied it liberally here in the second half. Finn gives it to Miles and a block by Max Seal. Boy, Miles had an opportunity to rip that one, and he took his time. And you can't give these guys on Cincinnati any time to get to this spot because they've got excellent timing. He thought he had all day. He didn't have a split second to play with it. Max Seal. It rolls out, Sato up there around the rim for the rebound, and he's only 6'5". He's got multi-skilled Romain Sato, but it's time for him to start taking over for his team. Dolman, big shot, missed badly. Chalmers, a runner, knocked back. So I think Xavier now has to start looking for Romain Sato, even though he's been defended. Again, he's the big guy, he's the focal point of the Cincinnati D. It creates opportunities for others if he touches it. Timeout, Bob Huggins in Cincinnati, 422 on the clock. And the Bearcats leading by three points in the Crosstown shootout. And tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern, two of the NBA's most popular players collide as Shaquille O'Neal and the Los Angeles Lakers meet LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll see if LeBron plays a little chippy with a little chip on his shoulder, having not been selected to the NBA All-Star team. NBA Wednesday on ESPN coverage begins with NBA shoot-around at 7 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Dave O'Brien, let out more with you here from the Centaur Center. Great to have you with us as part of Rivalry Week. 
There is no rivalry in the country that gets hotter than this one. Cincinnati and Xavier. Hicks has been incredible tonight with those block shots. Well, he certainly has. He's really commanded the paint. He's forced a lot of people not only to change their shots, but also he's changed a lot of minds. He's planted a seed, and in the second half, it's been much more difficult for Xavier to attack the glass. So they'll give him credit. When they have an opportunity to penetrate, they continue to do it because they're going to challenge Hicks, but Hicks has risen to that challenge. Seven blocks, a new career high, eight rebounds, and has a little bit of blood on his left arm. I guess when you're slapping the ball away with that regularity, you're going to break some skin. He looked at his arm, and then they would not let him check in. So 4.20 to go in the game. Max Hill starts his move, and Miles put the body on him and fouled him. Cincinnati leading by three. And three foul, fouls now on Anthony Miles. You know, I'm just so impressed with Jason Maxiel. The more he shows, watch how low he gets in triple threat. Gets his head and shoulders past the man. That's what creates the foul. He didn't take a wide turn to try to get to the basket. He went right at the shoulder of the defender and forced the issue. And for young people at home watching, you want to drive to the basket? Don't take that wide turn. You go right at the shoulder of the defender. Force him to either get out of the way or create the contact. Max Hill makes them both, bumping the lead to five. Cincinnati good at the line tonight, 10 out of 13. Xavier even better, they're 18 out of 21. Goldman is taking shots he doesn't need to take, but Miles there to clean it up. 66-63. Well, again, I wonder, that's the third time down now that Romain Sacco, the leading scorer, hasn't even gotten a whiff of the ball. Sato going for the steal, almost batted it free. Long one, too strong by Williams. Max Hill fights for the rebound and tosses it into the backcourt. So it'll be a turnover by Cincinnati. 3.41 to go, and we'll take a break right here. It's going to get furious down the stretch of this terrific rivalry in Cincinnati. stretch here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the Bearcats with a 66-63 lead inside the Sinta Center. Terrific rivalries all week. How about Kentucky and Louisville? Boy, it doesn't get much better than that in the bluegrass country. Ours tonight, Cincinnati and Xavier. Maybe the hottest of any of them and as far as non-conference rivalries go. Xavier, Cincinnati, we showed you Missouri, Illinois. Marquette, Wisconsin. The new kids will tell you that. And the older fans of Marquette and Notre Dame will say that's an even better rivalry from the old days, from the 70s. And considering, again, the way St. Joseph's has risen over the years and Villanova starting to get on the rise in the Big East, that's become something. And last night, St. Joe's demonstrating again that, you know, they're a team to be reckoned with. They're for real with that undefeated record. Yeah, a lot of people thought the Villanova game might be the one they fell in not to be. Sato finally gets his hands on it. Max Seal had the rebound knocked out of bounds by Dorman. And even though Sato missed that shot, it again establishes balance to this Xavier attack, forces Cincinnati to pay attention to it, and maybe create some opportunities on the next possession. 3.15 left. Xavier looking for a stop. Bobbitt has really been the scalding hot hand here in the second half of the Bearcats. And here's sets where, up for him. Here's where Cincinnati has to be tested in their half court. Can they execute? Can they get a good shot? And the answer right now is no. Bobbitt missed it. Sato runs out. You know, you pass the ball, you move it, and you wind up taking a shot that you can get with one pass. Finn can't connect, but Dolman gets the rebound. Chalmers, a long one. Tied up with 66. Well, Xavier's demonstrating the adage. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. 
It did not start well for them, but we've had eight ties and seven lead changes since Xavier got into the game. They led at halftime. They fell behind. They've tied it. White weaving in. It's Hicks again. He draws the foul. Boy, Eric Hicks was just battling under there. Getting position, using those strong shoulders, explosiveness. Take a look there, the offensive rebound by Dolman. And Chalmers just steps right in. Again, another inside-out situation where the shooter can flow into the shot. Hicks not a good foul shooter. 48%, but he's 3 for 4 tonight. Two twelve to go. I mean, Kirkland checks in for Bob Huggins. Bob working the officials right there again. Far more calm than he's been in the past. That's about the average for Hicks. One of two. Put Cincinnati up one. The Bearcats won their first 13 games of the season, but they've lost two of their last four. One to Louisville, one to Charlotte on Saturday. And you notice how the pressure really manages Xavier's attack. They can't come running at Cincinnati. They're very guarded as they get in and allow Cincinnati to get their defense set. Chalmers bounces to Saho. Baseline, airborne, foul on the play, blocking foul. And that's what tied up with Max Sears. Sorry, Dave, that's what I'm talking about with Sato. Get the ball in his hands. He's your senior. He's a guy with great experience and great skills. He's going to make something happen. On the baseline, the defender runs at him. He is bailed out a little bit. Fortunate that the officials call that. Pump fake drives the baseline, takes off, and the defender's not set. And as I mentioned before, when the offensive player leaves his feet, he's got to have some place to come down. The defender can't step up underneath him. Good night for Sato so far. 16 points, 11 rebounds. He recently made 31 consecutive foul shots. So he's pretty good at that line. Good enough here to give Xavier a one-point lead with a minute 40 to go. Hicks driving in, draws contact. Cage hit him with the body. Justin Cage, the freshman out of Indianapolis with a foul. Now we mentioned again that Cincinnati may not have a go-to guy. On, on Xavier's side, Sato has to be that guy. You know, not having a go-to guy is sometimes not always a bad thing. You got a couple of guys with the capability, like you saw Hicks on the isolation. You got Max Seal who can put it on the floor and create his own. You know, those guys, you can create a problem for the defense because they can't really point at one individual. Justin Cage picks up his fourth foul tonight, getting his first college start. Hicks can't get it. Sato had the rebound knocked out of his hands, but Dolman was the man on the spot. Flip side of having a go-to guy is that a go-to guy understands you get on the line, you got to be able to make them because they're con confident and accustomed to being in that position. 1.15 left. Timeout, Xavier. That motto takes the timeout. And we'll have 15 seconds to shoot it. His team leading by one. And to repeat that stat we had earlier for you tonight, remember Xavier had the lead by five at halftime. And under that motto, Xavier is 55 and six when they lead at intermission. Well, you can bet right now that motto is trying to design something that is going to get Xavier either a good shot opportunity to get to the free throw line and that means once again off the dribble little ball movement get it into the hands of the guys who can put it on the floor get into that paint take advantage of cincinnati's help reflex you know when you get into that paint cincinnati's going to swarm you and then you spot up the dolmans you spot up the sados and the other jump shooters and they should be ready to pull the trigger we'll see if they're ready to learn from these game ending routes that have cost them losses at dayton richmond and st joseph's not able to get the buckets down the stretch and it cost them games well that's the execution and again it all begins with getting it in the hands of the guys who can put you in a position to win 
Rosado trying to run right through that trap. He's fouled on the play. 1-12 left. Nick Williams with the personal. It's number two on him. 68-67. Well, the frustration of Bob Huggins is his defense didn't allow themselves a chance to make a stop. You know, allow Chalmers to split the double team. And once you do that, you're very vulnerable. And Cincinnati obviously didn't want to give up anything easy and foul. You know, as we came on air tonight, we were talking about Xavier's trouble at the foul line. have actually been excellent this evening. Just 66% for the year as a team. Another timeout, Cincinnati. NBA Fast Break Tuesday coming up next, but we have a minute six left. In the rivalry, they wait all year to see Cincinnati and Xavier. Just four, four miles, a little less than four miles separating these two campuses. So a short trip for Huggins' team on the bus tonight to get here to the Centa Center. But again, Bob Huggins trying to design a play not too dissimilar to what Dad Mata wanted to do, penetration and kick. And in fact, he brought in Field Williams, pulled him off the bench, their leading three-point field goal shooter. He's going to be the spot-up guy off the penetration. Okay, let's go back to 1996-97 at Cincinnati, the Shoemaker Center, with the score tied late. Cincinnati's Charles Williams fumbles the ball out of bounds. Lenny Brown then stepped up. He became the hero, hitting the jumper at the horn as Xavier shocked. Then number one, Cincinnati, 71 to 69. That's happened a couple of times in the recent years of this rivalry. Xavier stunning Cincinnati when the Bearcats were number one in the country. Cincinnati number 10 right now. Close lined in the neck. 56 seconds to go. Strong move, nice job by Cincinnati to spread the floor, take the Xavier help away, and just make it a one-on-one -on -one contest between Max and the floor right now. Nice duck in. Help is Max Seal already into his move. Miles picks up his fourth foul as Max Seal ties it at 68. And considering all that this game means, Max Hill just stepped up there, a little ice water, just buried that free throw. He's made six of seven. Trying to put Cincinnati in the lead again. Back and forth we go. The game's like a giant pendulum. Cincinnati retakes the lead, 69-68. Are they going to look for Sato to handle the ball? Well, they absolutely, because the assistant coach held up a sign, one flat Sato. So it's right there in black and white if they can find him. 37 seconds left. Well, Shot Nick, clock at 12, Len. Nick Williams stuck on Sato right now. Can't really get free. Romain Sato can't. Chalmers with a fire away. 27 seconds to go. Xavier leads by one. So you go to your next best option, Lionel Thomas, one-on-one -on -one with a fadeaway. Sato was nowhere to be found. They sealed him. Timeout, Cincinnati. So it's Lionel Chalmers who steps back and drains the follow-away jump shot. But you got to say, Cincinnati doing a terrific job in shadowing Sato, preventing him from getting the ball. But that play was absolutely called for him. That's Chalmers right there on the spin. Can't get the ball to Sato, so he shoots a fadeaway. Man, here's the reason why Chalmers essentially had to, had to take the shot that he wanted. Here, right here, is Romain Sato, defender shadowing him nicely. Chalmers can't get it to him. Again, Sato being fronted now inside. Chalmers looks and says, well, shot clock running down in six seconds. I might as well take a shot. You know what? The fur has been flying in the newspapers, talk radio, local TV, leading up to this game the last several days. A lot of provocative statements back and forth. Maybe the most provocative was Lionel Chalmers, the senior from Albany, New York. He said, we have the bragging rights. We beat them last year. They don't like it. They have to come to our place and get it. He just stepped up and hit a giant shot. He has 20 points, and he leads all scorers tonight. Well, that's what you call walking the walk right there. 
really the option was to go straight to Sato. And a nice job again by Nick Williams in fronting Sato on the post, preventing him from getting to the ball. The reset now. Cincinnati out of timeouts. Xavier has 160. 18.5 to go. Cincinnati basketball. And this is what it's all about right here. Crosstown rivalry comes down to the last shot. Folks on the edge of their seats. Then they throw it away. Cincinnati tosses it out of bounds. They may have just thrown the ball game away. That's heartbreaking. You're Bob Huggins. You lose this game on an unforced error. Nick Williams, the junior, with an errant pass, maybe a heartbreaking pass. Cincinnati playing for that last shot. And it really wasn't what Xavier did. It's what Cincinnati didn't do. Take a look right here. Man wide open. He just throws it over his head. I mean, as simple as that. And this is one of the things that when you look at Cincinnati, you look at some of the other highly ranked teams, it's all about mental toughness. You've got to be able to execute down the stretch in a close game situation. And when you make unforced errors, you know, when you don't cover guys and put a hand in their face as Cincinnati didn't do against Lionel Chalmers, you're just losing the game without really putting forth the effort necessary. Again, the pass. Xavier defenders get a little mixed up. Man wide open as he flashes back. And they just throw it over his head. Totally unforced error. So Xavier, 4.9 seconds away from maintaining bragging rights for another 12 months in the city of Cincinnati. No timeouts left for either side. Cincinnati has the possession error. Well, this is all about immediate attempt for a steal and foul. The 6'9 freshman, Justin Dillman, will check it in. Anthony Miles is a decoy. He's 45% from the line. You know he's running away from the ball. And Chalmers is the man who is fouled. 4.1 seconds to go. Chalmers has had a tremendous night. He goes to the line with his 20 points. Coming up next, NBA Fast Break Tuesday right here at ESPN2. Well, even if Chalmers makes both, it's still a one-possession ball game to tie. The Cincinnati has a chance, and in this season, 4.1 seconds is an eternity to go in line to end line. Oh, he missed the first one. No timeout, so they can't stop the clock. Neither side. I mean, we've seen P.J. Tucker go coast to coast against Providence and score. We've seen Carl Krauser from Pittsburgh go coast to coast and score in that little bit of time. He missed them both. In the corner, Sato lets it go out of bounds with 2.2 seconds to go, and it's off Cincinnati. And how about that? It comes down to the most fundamental of basketball execution, blocking out on a free throw. Chalmers couldn't hit either one in the foul before it's inbounded. As I said before, it's about mental toughness. Cincinnati hasn't been demonstrating it in this particular game down the stretch. Lack of execution in some critical times. And led an intentional foul. There was no intent to try and steal the ball whatsoever by Cincinnati. That's an intentional foul. Put Sato at the line. Yeah, you got to play the ball. And again, the ball wasn't even inbounded. You take a look right there. Just a tie up. Not a very smart situation. You may want to block the guy. You may want to get in his path, make him push you out of the way, but not grab him. I'll tell you what, the Musketeers having a chance to assault it away at the line are not doing that. But they've got possession after this, so all they have to do is get it in bounds and take the foul again. Again, the block out on the left side. The inability to keep that Xavier shirt out of the paint. May cost Cincinnati the game. Bowman trying to check in. 
Tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Xavier. Xavier touched it last. Now they're going to now they're going to change this, and they're going to say it was off Cincinnati. The official changed his mind, and with 1.2 seconds left, Xavier maintains inbounds. Batted around, and there's the horn to end it. So a wild finish, but Xavier has stunned Cincinnati in the crosstown shootout here at the Cintas Center, 71 to 69. Cincinnati tried to do all they could to overplay. Again, Dolman just let it go, and there's a touch right there. It was by Cincinnati. It wasn't off Chalmers. That was off Cincinnati. Officials made the good call. And here on the last inbound, ball thrown right in the middle. No one really ready to grab it. And with 1.2 seconds, even if Cincinnati had gained possession, wouldn't have been able to do much with it. So Xavier has bragging rights in Cincinnati once again. They win for the second straight year, beating number 10 Cincinnati 71-69. NBA Fast Break Tuesday presented by Lamiso coming up next. This is going to break.